My name is Josephine Denis. I am the curator of Amarty Golding in the Comfort of Embers. And this is Amarty Golding's first solo exhibition in Canada. It uh, groups two series of works that includes three films and two garment pieces that are featured in the films, as well as photographs from each of the series. One of them is called Bring Me to Heal, and the other one is called Chainmail. So for Bring Me to Heal, we have the two films, Bring Me to Heal 1 and 2. So the ideas behind Bring Me to Heal is how do we address destructive and harmful behaviors that we're perpetuating because of unresolved or unhealed traumas that have been passed down generationally and that we are experiencing in real time. So with Bring Me to Heal One, Amarty has written a sort of fable that's called The Running Horse and the Goose. It is a cautionary tale about how the behaviors that underpin our society around dominion and competition and how you always have to do better or earn more money as a way of asserting your value perpetuate the power dynamics that exist between, you know, being a winner or a loser. And the hair garment is, as far as we know, the largest human hair garment ever created. It took the hair artist, Kevin Fortune, four days to just comb through the mass of hair that they had. And then it took them about six months to actually create that piece. The care and compassion and patience that he is trying to teach through the fable in his artworks, they actually got to experience by making this incredibly delicate and difficult piece. The hair garment is itself a sort of a reflection of Amarty's own ancestry. His mother is uh, a Scottish English woman. His dad is Ghanaian and he grew up in a Rastafarian household. And he was really interested in looking at the ancient history, trying to look at the different ways in which they are quite similar. And so having a fable was really important in Bring Me to Heal One because it was about the tradition of oral history that exists in Britain as much as in Ghana. So with that story, we move on to Bring Me to Heal 2, where with this story, Amarty was really interested in figuring out how to use cultural practices and visual elements to own questionings around how to behave in the world in a way that perhaps doesn't perpetuate the harm of the systems from which we actually benefit. And he's always interested in a self-implicating question that really looks at how he himself is also accountable to both sides of the histories that he comes from. Being of mixed race, he is also at the receiving end of the white privilege that exists from being British, but also he has benefited from learning and experiencing and being part of a household that through Rastafarian philosophies is really interested in preserving and practicing sort of African healing perspectives. For Chainmail 3, Amardi took, again, months and months to create the puffer jacket, actually weighs 166 kilograms, and here we'll have it on display for the audience to actually touch and have a sense of how heavy it is. And for Marty, that part is extremely important about the significance of chainmail in society. In medieval times, those who wore chainmail were considered the most courageous, the most respected, because they went to war, really facing what it means to live and die for your people, but also means that the person that's wearing it is getting ready to kill, says a lot about a society and how violent it is. There's so many layers to his work, 
And for me, it's honestly such a dream to work with a Marty. He has a hand and, you know, the color that he wants for the walls of the exhibition. He really cares for the experience of the audience and how they're able to take in the work that he's doing in the collective work that makes this exhibition possible, really.